Okay, we are back with chapter 27, Globalization and Its Discontents. And this is the period from 1989 to 2000. So President George Herbert Walker Bush and Bill Clinton. Um, here in this image we have uh, people dancing above the Berlin Wall. Uh, the fall of the wall came uh, in the fall of 1989 and ushered in the end of the Cold War, which was a peaceful ending, which was uh, surprising to many people. Um, myself included, growing up, I always thought Cold War would end uh, with uh, nuclear war, but it was it was the complete opposite. So 1989, pro-democracy protests uh, began spreading in Europe, and the Soviet Union did not suppress this dissent. Uh, Mikhail Gorbachev um, started opening up the, the Soviet Union, and uh, this really was a blessing for the rest of the world when when this happened. So November 9th, uh, the crowds breached the Berlin Wall. Uh, the guards had opportunities to shoot the people, and, and they didn't do it. And the wall was torn down, and it was the beginning of the end of communism uh, throughout Europe. Um, so these Eastern European communist governments um, are going to agree to surrender their power. And that Iron Curtains Churchill spoke about in 1946 um, has, has fallen. Um, but the Soviet Union is going to be in, in a world of trouble. Uh, that war in Afghanistan was lingering on for, for a decade at this point, and uh, severe economic crises uh, emerged in the Soviet Union. Uh, Gorbachev is going to resign from the party, and that will end 84 years of communist rule that goes back to, to Vladimir Lenin. Uh, throughout the world, we're going to see increased democracy. Um, South Africa released Nelson Mandela, who was jailed for uh, close to 30 years. Four years later, he becomes um, uh, a president. And countries throughout Central America and Africa will, will see democratic governments emerging. Uh, here on the map of Eastern Europe, we'll see a bunch of newly freed countries. Uh, the Soviet Union broke up into 15 different countries. So Russia returns. Uh, Kazakhstan here. Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Georgia. Uh, here in Eastern Europe, you have Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania are all freed. Uh, Yugoslavia is going to break up into five smaller countries, and that's going to be the site of some, some terrible uh, ethnic cleansing later in the 90s. Uh, Czechoslovakia will, will become two different countries. Um, so really a huge remaking of the map. So George Herbert Walker Bush... Uh, Reagan's vice president spoke of a new world order, you know, no longer a uh, world divided between Soviet and American camps. Now the United States was the only world power in the country. Um, and soon after, the United States will, will find itself embroiled in, in a war. And this is when Iraq invaded oil-rich Kuwait in the Middle East in 1990, and America was concerned that uh, an attack on neighboring Saudi Arabia could result in the future America's number one source of oil. So Bush uh, garnered the United Nations support and sent a half a million troops into the region. Kuwait was freed, but Saddam Hussein was allowed to retain power, uh, which is going to lead to problems within his own country for the people uh, who mistakenly believed the United States would, was going to come in and liberate them. Uh, Hussein had, uh, has a long history of, of war crimes against his own people, of torture, um, of unspeakable atrocities. Um, Iraq is going to receive economic sanctions, uh, but more importantly, uh, the United States is going to set up a permanent uh, base in Saudi Arabia, and many Islamic fundamentalists believe uh, this was an insult to Islam. You know, Islam, uh, the founding of Islam took place in Saudi Arabia, and they believe that the United States is going to have a, a poor influence on, on the Saudi people. Uh, particularly Osama bin Laden, who is from Saudi Arabia. Uh, here's an image of President Bush with Defense Secretary and General Colin Powell, who is uh, the hero of this Iraq war, and later he'll be Secretary of State under George Bush's son, George Bush. Uh, Bill Clinton's going to emerge in uh, 1992 um, as the Democratic candidate for president, and uh, a terrible recession that ensued in the early 90s is going to spell the doom uh, for, for George Bush. Uh, third party candidate Ross Perot is going to emerge and, and garner 19% of the vote, um, but Clinton is going to emerge victorious. Uh, Clinton is going to raise taxes on the wealthy, 
which will help lift 4 million Americans out of poverty. Uh, but he was a centrist. He was um, a, a Democrat, but, also, but he was a conservative Democrat uh, economically. Uh, he's going to pass NAFTA, which is the North American Free Trade Agreement, uh, which allowed free trade zone between the United States, Canada, and Mexico. And uh, he worked closely with his wife, Hillary, who you might know of her today, um, trying to get universal health insurance. Um, but unfortunately for the Clintons, that did not happen. Uh, here's an image of refugees in war-torn Bosnia, uh, which we'll be talking about shortly. Um, so Bill Clinton's going to win the election uh, pretty handily, 69% of the electoral vote. And the Balkan crisis. Uh, Yugoslavia was broken up, and uh, many ethnic groups uh, were in Yugoslavia, but they were kept under control uh, under the communist regime of Tito, who ruled until 1980. Um, but the Serbs in Bosnia are going to drive out the Muslims and the Croatians, and they'll use mass murder and rape as their military strategy. Um, so that happened in, in the early 90s, in the mid-90s. In 1998, uh, the United States and NATO launched a war against the Serbs, uh, against their leader Slobodan Milosevic, um, because they were engaging in ethnic cleansing against these people. Uh, Clinton tried to broker peace in the Middle East between Israel and the Palestinian Lib Liberation Organization, uh, unsuccessful, um, and his biggest regret was not uh, helping out during the Rwandan genocide in 94. Uh, here's an image of Clinton with uh, South African President Nelson Mandela. Uh, the 90s saw a huge economic boom. Uh, there was free trade and deregulation, uh, but, also, but also opened the doors for scandals in the energy field, telecommunications, and stocks. Uh, during the New Deal, we talked about the Glass-Steagall Act, which barred banks from uh, engaging in, in the stock market. Uh, investment banks were allowed to do that, but not commercial banks until this act was repealed. Um, and then the banks will engage in some risky behavior and have to be bailed out in the mid-2000s. Uh, check out the movie The Big Short if you find that interesting. Uh, just came out. Uh, and there's a rising inequality of wealth at this time. Uh, Bill Gates himself, one person, had more money than the bottom 40% of the United States population put together. And the poor and middle class in the 1990s uh, and 2000s became worse off. Uh, the 1990s saw a rise in immigration. Uh, we can see the birthplace of immigrants, uh, more than half coming from Latin America, but also many from Asia and Europe as well and Africa. And we'll see the these graphs indicating the rise of minorities uh, projected by 2050 where whites will no longer be the majority. Uh, the prison system really expanded in the 1990s. Uh, over 2 million people were in prison. People talk of a prison industrial complex in which uh, communities that are struggling for employment will build these large uh, prisons, uh, which employs lots of people, but then you need lots of prisoners. And the prisons were disproportionately uh, represented um, with minorities. Uh, even though the majority of people in the country are white, 70% of the people in prison were not white. And um, Rodney King beating in 1992, uh, well, he was beaten in 91 by the LA police, captured on camera. Uh, and then when the LA police officers were, were found not guilty, uh, it led to terrible rioting throughout Los Angeles. Um, just showing again, despite all of the civil rights uh, gains, attained um, you know, the, the issues in the plight of the urban poor still hadn't been addressed. Uh, here's a maximum security prison under construction. Uh, Bill Clinton, 1998. Um, the, the Republicans were looking for an excuse to get rid of him, and he kind of represented everything about the, the 60s that the conservatives disliked, and they found their opportunity uh, when the scandal was exposed where Clinton had an affair with his White House intern, Monica Lewinsky. Um, Clinton lied under oath. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. And the House of Representatives uh, voted to impeach Clinton for perjury and obstruction of justice. 
Uh, however, Clinton was not removed from office. Uh, his popularity continued, and, and people believed that um, an affair should not result in the loss of the, maybe the most important job in the country. Uh, Bill Clinton is going to give way to, uh, to Vice President Al Gore in the election of 2000 uh, after his two terms. And uh, Al Gore ran against Republican Texas Governor George W. Bush. Uh, whose father, George Herbert Walker Bush, uh, was president from 89 to 93. Closest election in history. Uh, Gore won by half of 1% in the popular vote, but it came down to Florida, and both both sides uh, claimed victory. Um, there were lots of, of um, tickets that were um, contested, like, like this image here. Um, they would look for hanging chads. You know, if you punch a hole in in your uh, ticket, and if the if the little piece of paper is still attached on the back where the hole was punched through, they wouldn't count those. So lots of of talk like that. Um, the Supreme Court is going to um, halt the the recount that was demanded by the Democrats, and um, Bush was declared the winner. No coincidence, maybe, that George Bush's brother, Jeb, was the governor of Florida. Um, and Bush is going to win the election uh, despite not winning the popular vote, which was, what, the fourth time in history that it happened? Um, so that will usher in a new period, uh, Chapter 28, which we'll get to. All right, that concludes Chapter 27. <laughs>